lap 21 of 60, round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship. And it could well be the Go Go Larry Show. Larry Perkins coming into this very, very strongly indeed, sitting in behind George Fury. Out of those last two corners, he was able to work his way past Glenn Seaton. So he moves up now on the tail of Fury. Brocky still running second, Grice running away with it. Out of the very special Neil Crompton file of useless information, one of the things that I noticed is that uh, Perkins hasn't been passed by a motor car in any race since Wellington. Nobody's actually passed him on the road, he's been the flyer. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes in this one. Last weekend he put a lot of pressure on the leaders and didn't quite get there after he skated off on turn one. The Fury now having a nibble on the outside, oh. I guess the wrong side puts him out wide. That's an advantage for Larry if he can sneak under there and help to close that gap just a little. He couldn't do it that time, but it goes to show that George is ready to try anything to work his way past, and here he goes, down on the inside, swinging down on the run here with Peter Brock. Well, he has to make a move, or Perkins is going to be on top of these guys, that's what he's worried about, side by side as they go to the left-hander at Coca-Cola, and still can't quite get enough of the Nissan up there to do the job. Perkins not uh, up far enough as well. Well, that's really extraordinary. We'll just see Perkins here in the background as they come over the hump down towards the left-hander near the pit corner. Brock all the time has been pushing very deep on brakes and just starting to lock up here and there. But I think that for a man under an incredible deal of pressure, he's hanging on very well. Les Small, the manager and owner of Roadways Racing Services with Graham Bailey, the co-winner with Alan Grice in last year's James Hardy 1000. Fury does have the most to worry about at the moment, I think with Perkins looming large in the mirrors and still no way past Brock. They come out of the corner now, work their way down towards the Coca-Cola turn. Brocky using the right part of the racetrack and still able to accelerate away from George Fury there. Fury's made a couple of charges. They've amounted to nothing so far. He's kept the pressure well and truly on Peter Brock. Perkins is getting to them slowly, but uh, keep in mind he was able to uh, dispense with uh, Glenn Seaton very, very quickly indeed. The other thing that's interesting here is that uh, young Glenn Seaton's dropped well away from this uh, little battle. Brock, then Fury, then Perkins, and then behind them Jim Richards now, and you'll see Seaton a long way in the background. There he is, and he's back in sixth position. So something astray there because he was right on George's tail in those early laps. It's tough racing with the boys, isn't it? Is it ever? 6.8 seconds is the gap between Alan Grice and Peter Brock, so he's laughing all the way to the bank at the moment, trying to get some more points up in this year's Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship. Remember that last weekend, Grice, had a fairly ordinary run, finished fourth, and was savaged a bit by everybody else, didn't have enough horsepower, didn't seem to be able to get it to the road. He's down in fifth place in the championship at present with 13 points, so this win, if he can get it, and the way it's looking at the moment, he's doing it nicely, would be very welcomed by the roadways team but there's the thing that might bring him undone alternator light is on and the voltmeter still showing a charge grice has got lots to think about still reading 14 in the green sector there no, it's starting to drop there you see noticed it dropped down to about 12. he's also running a very high dip temperature i noticed there as well i wonder whether he switched those pumps off well, it's all happening here in this battle for second, and George Fury has gone past Peter Brock as they go down to the left-hander. Brock now back to third, and Larry Perkins knocking on the door of his old team boss. Well, he's finally done it. We were checking out the alternator light on uh, Alan Grice's Bob Jane T-Mart's Commodore. Now, if George Fury is to put in a, a long run to the flag, it has started. We'll be able to give you the time split next time across the line. down coming up on car number 27 fury fights his way past just slips down there brock into cover very quickly indeed and brock showing uh, right away that he's not prepared to throw it away fury very quick out of that turn brock a little sideways beneath the isis bridge jimmy richards goes through so too does uh, glenn seaton and sitting right in behind glenn seaton is of course tony longhurst well, now the big question is, what sort of an equation does George Fury have to overcome to catch Alan Grice? And I uh, think seven he's got and a half seconds. Well, yeah, and it's a very tall order. 
26 laps down out of 60. An awful long way to go. Well, he's still got Brocky right with him there. Yes, he's certainly not sprinting away, but at least he's got some clear air now and has a chance to get on with the job and think about it rather than continually trying to plot away around the outside or inside of Peter Brock. Fury coming down towards Australian National Line corner. Brock still close to his bumper. A car length or two, then back to Larry Perkins with Jim Richards. A couple then back to Glenn Seaton. The other guy that's coming into play as we take this break, we'll come back and look at that, but Alan Grice lead. Lap 29 of 60, round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship. An M3 BMW power coming to the fore with Jimmy Richards. Working his way past Larry Perkins. And now, well and truly, staying in touch with Peter Brock. Of course, Peter Brock uh, held down second for most of the race until George Fury finally found a way past. We'll see exactly how that happened. Here they come with Brock, very much sideways coming out of the corner, one bobble there, through between them, when George Fury, how alert was George to be able to take the split and make it up to second. He's still holding down second, Grice still the race leader. So Richard's charging through the field, he was the guy that I was going to talk about just before the break, I don't know where he's getting this pace from as we've just reached half race distance, but his little car is really on song and starting to close in a little on Peter Brock, so that's going to be an interesting battle as this one unfolds. He's left his teammate Tony Longhurst a fair way behind, and the other interesting thing that's happening at the moment is there's just been a real squally wind across the place and a, and a wind shift, a direction change, so I just wonder whether or not we might get some showers out of this, and as I look around on the hills, it's looking pretty ordinary. Could be, anything could happen here with weather. Dickie Johnson in the Shell Ultra High, Cosworth Ford Sierra carrying one of our little miniature race cam units. It hasn't been the best of days for Dickie Johnson, nor for Greg Hansford. Well, Dick's back in 12th position at this stage, and looks like he's got a big piece of paper across the front of the car, right in the uh, radiator intake area. And that won't be helping his gauges at all as he comes up onto the back of Ray Golson in the ex Jim Richards BMW. But the shell entry is yet to be fully developed. I guess he's really keeping his fingers crossed that he can drag some horsepower out of this car in the very near future. He says it handles fine, but it stops terrific, but it just doesn't have enough grunt. Shot from race cam, Dick Johnson hard at work as he changes into fourth, now to fifth, through the very fast sweeper up towards the top left-hand corner. Of course, they, they planned uh, with the Cosworth to start the season uh, so well, but they're down just a, a touch on horsepower. Well, they've got an evolution uh, coming up on the car, apparently, but at the moment, it really is not working, the car, as it should. It's not giving enough power. Well, this is Greg Hansford's car, the second of those two shell entries, and Hansford just rounding up one of the OXO Motorsport Sierras, and he's in 10th position at this stage. Greg Hansford, 34 years of age, from Brisbane. A bike exponent, second in 78 and 79 in the World 250 Championship, second in 78 and 79 in the World 350, runner-up in the Australian Endurance Championship in 84, and third in the James Hardy 1000 in 1984. That Nissan driver profile on Greg Hansford. And I would expect that they correct a few of the engine management problems. Well, Don, the uh, Sierras that will see them very, very competitive for the remaining rounds. Well, Don Smith, who also runs these cars, is off to England on Tuesday to meet with Andy Rouse and uh, try and find some horsepower with these cars and, and tweak the engine management because, as we understand it, Richard, the reports coming out of Europe suggest that these cars are very much quicker than they are, so either somebody's having a huge fudge or they know something we don't know. Well, Rouse reckoned that the car should be, even as it stands, two to two and a half seconds quicker than the old Sierra Cosworth. Oh, sorry, the old Sierra Turbo, and that just hasn't been the case. Uh, in Europe, the Sierra Turbo was able to beat everything towards the end of last year, and the Cosworth really ought to be able to do better still. This is one of the OXO entries. 
being driven by Don Smith, owner of the team, along with John Kraft. Andrew Medicki from Port Macquarie is running the second car in that team. Don's a veteran of Australian touring car racing, traditionally in small capacity cars, but he's now embarked on this very expensive and uh, so far quite successful campaign with their cars. They seem to be just a fraction more developed than Dick's cars. This is Tony Longhurst in the second of the JPS BMW M3s and he's just in front of Graham Crosby in car number eight and Crosby and Longhurst have been hard at it and they're back at this stage of the game in positions seven and eight. And there's Jim Richards, lead driver for the JPS team and he's starting to close the gap on Peter Brock in car 05 and Brock is in third position, Richards in fourth. Still about 5.7 seconds the gap from Alan Grice back to George Fury. So Grice able to maintain that, uh, that gap, although it was out over six at one stage. But with a lot of uh, eating away at that gap, keeping in mind they've got uh, 28 or so laps still remain. They had some problems with these BMWs last weekend and they had problems again yesterday and on Friday for what little practice time they had with the uh, brake disc caliper rubbing on the disc itself and then inducing plenty of heat which gave them uh, awful brake fade problems. They claim to have now rectified that. So Alan Grice leads round two of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship very, very comfortably and is leading away well on lap number 35 out of 60. Second spot still held down by George Fury. Third is Peter Brock and of course back behind Brock is the rapidly approaching Jimmy Richards. Glenn Seaton is next and then of course uh, Larry Perkins followed in by Tony Longhurst and Graham Crosby. So still a way to go. Gracie. Nope. Well, it's overcast, but there's no rain on the planes. At 38 of 60 in round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship, Colin Bond and the Alpha 75 Turbo, the Caltex entry. Not having uh, the best of weekends, Colin has found the car uh, still has a lot to give. It's not giving too much here today. Well, he's back in 13th position at the moment and already been dispensed with by Peter Brock and Jim Richards and of course race leader Alan Grice has put a lap on him. They had fuel filter blockage problems yesterday and they thought that would have solved all their problems. It obviously hasn't. The Caltex, Caltex entry needs some more work. But Jim Richards, isn't he working hard on the back of Peter Brock at the moment? Other information is that uh, quite some laps ago, Gary Scott very quickly pulled off the circuit and took car number six and second mobile dealer team entry into the transporter. We don't know what the problem is there. He's just vanished. So Brock flies the mobile flag solo at the moment. And I think he's about to be dusted off by Jim Richards. And look at Richards and the braking ability of this M3 up on the outside of Brock. Tries to steal some road from him. A very hard way to do it. But he gets power to the ground very quickly in the little BM. Now this is a very interesting test. He's got the inside advantage, but it puts him on the wrong side of the road when they get to Coca-Cola. And in theory, Brock should have the horsepower. <laughs> Brock enjoying this. I'm sure he was almost waving at Jim as they went down the back sweeper. These guys went to multiple James Hardy victories in the 70s. Separate teams now, and no love lost at all. Look at Brocky glancing in the rear view mirror. It's a big eyeful of car number three, the JPS BMW M3, perhaps the most impressive new car in the series this year. It's certainly the only one to have actually shown uh, what it can do. And they're developing the car all the time. They've spent a lot of time out at Amaru Park in the lead up to this series with Frank Gardner and test driver Ludwig Finnaber. But they have been working very, very hard and it's obviously paying off. And Jim again up on the outside, we'll see a carbon copy manoeuvre get shoved out wide, has the inside for the next long, slow right-hand kick. Brock should have the horsepower again, and it'll all happen once more. We'll follow this closely. I'm really sure they were having a conversation last time they went down here. Brocky having a look out the window. So if that's your best kit, you need some more. Well, Jim's in the left-hand drive spot, and Brocky in the right, so they're pretty close. Now Richard's using the braking ability of this car very nicely. If he can get this manoeuvre, he's done it nicely. But no, drops the right rear into the gravel. Bit of rally crossing and we'll have to go back to the drawing board once more. He's having a terrific scrap here. Well, I thought he was going to 
stay on the outside. That's possibly the spot to stay. Oh, but, close. But Jim is just filling the mirrors for Peter Brock. And he's desperately trying to get the inside run up here. Brock is not going to move off line. Brock goes for it again. Richards has got to take a very deep, hard breath here and go in almost uh, tick. If he could snatch that line from him and ultimately take some road off him and really jam Brock's nose into the inside of the corner, he'll get away with this because then he can cover his tracks coming out. But at the moment, he's always going to have Brock as a nightmare as they come up to the left-hander at Coca-Cola because he's got the inside running. And he's just got a couple of extra miles an hour. There they go again. Door handle to door handle. Round two. Well, this time he's got room. If he can just close that gap, I think he has very successfully. So Jim Richards up a slot using every centimetre of the road. Well, what a fine performance from him up to third place. A genuine giant killer act from uh, Jimmy Richards here today at Simmons Plains. Glenn Seaton sits in behind Peter Brock. He'll be the next one to attack. In very long distance races like we're going to see in the European and World Touring Car Championships, Richard, this car is obviously going to be one to watch. It certainly is. I think it's going better even than BMW. Let's have a look at the Volts now on Grice's car. Look at that. They're right down to 12 now. The ultimeter st line is still on and there. And look the at the diff line. temperature up in the red zone as well. So he switched the auxiliary pumps off to try and keep diff cool. And uh, now he has a problem where... Uh, He's got a car that's got no charge and everything around it is getting hot and he's got George Fury closing in on him all the time and so bad is the situation that he's excommunicated us and he switched off the race cam for the moment in an effort to try and save some power. 